Hey folks, welcome back. I was uh, extending one of my mines. I can't remember which one this was. Uh, oh, yeah, I can just look up on the mini-map. It's my westward westward tunnel. I was extending it, and just as I was about to give up, I hit Traces of Lig Lignite, which is one of the two forms of coal in this game. And so I, you know, did the usual thing, measured out the, uh, found the farthest reaches of where I could get readings of the traces, took the middle point, Dug in a bit and, ooh, very large sample of lignite. So I thought I'd bring you guys in at this point and, uh, and I'll just start mining away. And if this takes a while, I'll just, you know, speed it up or, or do a cutout. Uh, but, uh, one of the nice things about lignite is that it'll, uh, cut down on our charcoal consumption. We can't use it for smelting metals, but we can use it for reheating things and cooking things in the uh, in the forge. So that will give us one. Uh, whoops, want this. So that would give us uh, uh, one usage that uh, that wouldn't be uh, sucking down on our charcoal supply. And you'll see when we get to it is, especially since this is, oh, there it is right there. Oh, well, that didn't take very long at all. So since this is a very large lignite deposit, coal deposits tend to be very big. So just to give you an idea, let's see where this one is. Is it above me or below me? Looks like it's below me. Okay, now here's a, have I, I don't know if I pointed this out before. This is a cool little bug in Terra Firmcraft, but You'll frequently get it. I think it probably only happens on chunk boundaries. Um, but when on chunk boundaries, when there's uh, uh, an ore body uh, in ore body in the way, then for some reason the texturing doesn't happen correctly, and you see right through, right through into the uh, in the scene. So we can look down, see all level. But there's actually a tr lignite right here. If I get rid of one, no, that means there's more lignite beyond. So now we can walk out into this really scary space here. We're out in pure lignite land here and it's all invisible. So one way, often how you can fix that, here let me put it just by putting a torch down. There we go. Now you can see all that lovely lignite. Oh, there's some above us too. Uh, so it looks like I maybe came into the middle of the bot ore body, which is pretty good. Oh, this goes up ways. Oh, in fact there's more up there. Oh. Anyway, let's leave that for a moment. Let's just see how far this goes, because I'll give you an idea. Now, so why is this, you know, given that we have our charcoal pit and we can make charcoal, why even bother with this stuff? Well, the reason is, as you can see, I can mine this stuff pretty quickly. And on average, you get about two coal from every uh, block of lignite uh, that you mine. The other type of coal is called uh, bitumous coal, and it's basically the same is you get on average about two uh, two coal from it, each block of it that you mine. And so you can mine this stuff pretty quickly. Like this is a lot faster than waiting, uh, you know, waiting 19 hours for a charcoal pit to produce maybe three block, you know, three, uh, three stacks of charcoal. And unlike other ores, uh, charcoal is or, or sorry, coal is like charcoal in that it can stack to 64, so you can carry an awful lot of it back with you. So that means it, you know, you can come into one of these large coal deposits and just stock up on enough to run your forge for the rest of eternity. And that way you can keep your hard-won charcoal for just using for smelting metals. So this is pretty cool. <clears throat> just thought you'd want to see it, so I'm going to mine a bit of this and then go back to searching for iron. See you then. So here we are about half an hour later and I've extracted just under 900 uh, units of coal out of here which is more which is almost certainly more than I'll need for the rest of rest of my time in this world and you can see if I do ever run out there is lots more where that came from so I don't even need to bother getting excited about any other uh, coal finds that I might run into, coal seams. So, but now, as if you look down at my uh, water bar, you can see that I am running low on water and I have already sucked dry all of my, uh, 
all of my jugs. So it's time for me to head back up. And once I get up there, we'll uh, see if there aren't some more interesting things to be done. See you then. I had completely forgotten that while digging out this uh, western, my western tunnel here, uh, the uh, lignite that I was just mining is just down that way a little ways, is that I'd broken into this little, uh, this little water, uh, watering hole, underground pool, if you will. So that means that I can uh, refill my jugs. I don't have to go running back upstairs. That's always handy. Ah. So given that, I think I'll go back to looking for some iron ore. And uh, unless I happen to find some, it probably won't make any difference to you guys, because the next cut will uh, put us back together upstairs anyway. See you then. Bye. Well, yes, indeed, I am still down here in my mines uh, looking for iron. And I have hit the sort of the jackpot to some degree here. So right where I've got this torch here, so let me get on my prospector's pick. You see, oh, that's not it. Where is it? There, a medium sample of limonite. Now, limonite is a, an iron ore. So that's what I've been looking for. There's three iron ores, limonite, magnetite, and hematite. But if you look at the area I'm in, so this here, that's tetrahedrite. Over here, this is lignite. And then where is it? Around here somewhere? There, a very large sample of bituminous coal, which is the other type of coal you can find. So I'm surrounded by all these very large samples of other things, and I'm trying to track down this much smaller, uh, or currently much smaller sample of limonite. So this is going to be interesting to see if I can actually find it. All right. And more limonite. Well, if nothing else, I have lots of tetrahedrite by the time I'm done here. All right, can we pick up a signal? Ooh, a very large sample of limonite. Okay. Now, how far back does that go? Well, it goes back at least this far. Let's try coming back to here. Yep, comes back this far. How about here? I can't test anything else there. A large sample of night. Okay. And that's it. So that's the first very large reading that we're getting. So cool. All right, so we're not too far away from it. We're within 12 of it. And there it is. Yes. Yeah, it's a very large... Uh, yeah, let's get my lights. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, it's a very large deposit. That's good. After picking through all those traces of hematite before, I don't really have the stomach for doing it again. All right, so now we're into the boring part where I dig out lots of rock in my pursuit of these little bits and pieces of ore. So I'll bring you back in when there's something a bit more exciting. Well, I just got through spending about a week of game time, probably closer to a week and a half, running around looking for uh, different types of wood. I'll get more into why I did that in a moment, but it has to do with putting the roofing up here. But when you include that time and all the time I've been down mining, about three months has passed, I guess, since, uh, uh, since the end of the previous episode. And, well, let's bring up the calendar here you can see now we're, we're we're into the first week of March I'm not sure where we were but I thought we were in December toward the end of the last episode 
But anyway, winter has come and gone, and during that winter, this water froze up, or a lot of it froze up, and we actually had, I think, a little bit of snow hit the ground, uh, with the net result that most of my crops popped out, so, the, <laughs> so I had to quickly gather them up. Some of them actually stayed in, like the wheat uh, stayed in, and you can see over here these potatoes. Uh, they didn't pop out, and uh, and they're actually now, they've now uh, matured and they're ready to harvest. Anyway, we're getting close... We're pretty much into spring, so I'm going to have to replant soon. But one of the things that happened is because the water froze up here, uh, when it melted, it left it in kind of an odd state. See this here? As the water just kind of <laughs> ends there. Uh, same thing happened over in the other channel. It's pretty easy to clear it up, though. I can just uh, drop a block in there and remove it. And Bob's your uncle. Oh, it doesn't go quite as far as before, though, now, I guess. Yeah. Anyway, so is that... Oh, and the other thing is the uh, freezing water also ripped up part of my lily pad bridge. So um, I'm going to have to put in some better bridges than that. What are a couple other things that happened? Um, oh, the, the cows had their calves. So there's one there. There's another one floating around. There's the other one here. And the third one is Roman free. So, oh yeah, the woods. <clears throat> um, oh, God, those animals are noisy. Uh, what I want to say is, I was, I, the, uh, the voting was, well, let's come over here and have a look. I'll show you. The voting was for this, uh, uh, two to one style here, which is good because that's one I like the best as well. And in terms of the color to go with this stone over here, I think this birch here was the nicest. Uh, but I also wanted to put in a bit of variation of color. I kind of thought that was nice too. But when I tried using, uh, what did I have initially over here? Oh yeah, I had here the white cedar, the stuff right on the end here. <clears throat> and that was just way, way too much of a difference, difference between the two. I tried putting in the white elm here, but... The green just didn't look right. So that was when I started looking around a bit and I found this spruce. Spruce? No, this is pine. And I found this pine here. And But you can have a look here. And you can see that it's stand, it just it's too much of a contrast when you put a little bit of pine in there. I mean, I may even have, I may have too much here anyway, but it just, it's just too much of a contrast as far as I'm concerned. So I wanted to find Aspen, because I knew it was darker. If we come here, you can see it. This is Aspen here. It's actually darker than I remembered it. I didn't want it to be quite that dark. But, so, I took me, basically, yeah, a full game week just to find the Aspen. Man. But along the way, I found a few others. So this is Hickory over here. Um, we already had the Chestnut. This is the Ash we already had. We already had Maple. We already had Willow. We already had White Elm and Birch. This is Sequoia? Yeah, this is the Sequoia. This is Spruce. Uh, this is the Aspen that I was looking for. And this was the Pine, as I mentioned. And we already had the White Cedar. So I put the Birch and the Aspen together, and that gave me this. This here. Now, it's still a bit more contrast than I wanted between the two. But I think it'll be okay, especially if I cut back on the number of them, uh, the number of the uh, dark aspen that I use in the roof. So that's what I'm going to go with, is I'm going to go with the uh, the two to one, since that was by far the big winner on the uh, on the vote, and put in just throw in just the occasional uh, the occasional aspen plank in here, aspen shingle in here, just to add a little bit of just to break it up a bit and add a little bit. So. Uh, let's get on with that, I guess. Well, was there anything else I wanted to show you? Oh, yeah. The other thing was, so I don't know whether I just was away or down in the mines when this olive tree finally did whatever it was going to do, but I never did see any olive ice of this tree, so I've still never seen an olive tree produce olives. But, but I think it was just because I wasn't around at the right time. Down in the mines. Anyway, so I'm going to start... Uh, Working on the new roof, I do not have anywhere near enough uh, birch or aspen yet to do the entire roof, but I'll get a good start on it. 
And it'll probably be, uh, we'll go to sped up time so that you don't have to sit through every little detail of what I do.
Well, that's all I can do now. Um, I need more uh, aspen. So that I can either travel, it's about two and a half days travel in that direction, I guess, to get the aspen. Or if you look up on this hill here, I brought back a bunch of seedlings so I can wait. I don't know how long it takes aspen to grow, but probably like another five or, well, not five, probably another 10 days for the aspen to grow. So that's probably what I'll do is I'll, uh, I'll just halt the uh, roof construction at this point and then you'll go off and do other things and let these guys grow and reach maturity and then we chop them down that'll give us enough aspen to finish up the rest of this but we can at least expose some of the some of our nice roof from the inside now and this will give us an additional benefit that I'll be able to stack chests up higher now so I'll finally get some more be able to organize the space in here a little bit better again Okay, well, this is going to take a little bit of time, so back to speed up mode. All right, so I think it looks pretty nice from the inside. You can see I screwed up, I made one mistake here. Yeah, this, mm, kind of hard here. This guy here is sticking out perpendicular. He should be sitting in that empty slot there. So I'll fix that up come morning. But yeah, see, now I can stand on top of the chest so there's lots of room to put up more chests. Yay! Here we go. I wonder if I can actually stand on this chest. Oh yeah, I need to hold down shift. There we go. Ha ha. Cool. Alright, well, I'm not sure, but that's probably going to be the uh, end of the episode. Thank you for joining me as usual. Um, what I'll probably do is I'll, I will finish this up off camera. Um, and, uh, well, I guess it's actually going to depend on, on how long it takes for those aspen to grow. But I'll do a bit more mining as well and pull out more of that, uh, more of that iron ore or limonite that we found. And that'll give us a whole bunch of new things that we can work on on the next episodes. So thanks for joining me. Bye.